in today's episode of Unsolved Mysteries. We're going to be diving in into a strange death of a radio talk show host and journalist from the Philippines named Rubilita Garcia. What's interesting about this case is that she was mysteriously gunned down by two men in her home in Bacor City during a presidential period in the Philippines where there have been approximately 27 reported murders of media workers from the years 2010 to 2014, with her death being the very last one. So, who exactly is Rubilita Garcia? Why was she specifically targeted and killed as opposed to other people? Also, was Rubilita Garcia's death part of a government conspiracy and was killed due to holding top secret information of the Philippines president? These are questions that still need answers, but let's dive deep into the clues of this case to come up with our own theories and speculations. Let's get into this case now. Born in 1962, Rubilita Garcia was a 52-year-old widow who had one son, Tristan, and a granddaughter. Garcia was most known by her peers as a reporter of over 25 years and has mostly done investigative journalism for Remate, the Filipino Times, as well as a radio talk show host for the station DWAD in Cavite province. Garcia was also the president of a group of journalists which was called the Confederation of Active Media Practitioners Organization in the area of Calabazon, as well as an active member of the National Press Club in the Philippines. Unfortunately, on April 6, 2014, she was gunned down by two men in front of her 10-year-old granddaughter, son, and sister-in-law in her home in Bacor City. Before she died, she said that the local police chief was the only one who wanted her dead. No conviction has been made, however, only a temporary relief of duty. She died on the way to the hospital, and her family members were not physically harmed. The Philippine National Police formed a special investigation task force, but no one was captured. One of the suspects was witnessed to be about six foot tall in his 30s with a tattoo of a cross on his neck and a tattoo on his arm. A man was arrested during a busy bus operation in Cavite City, but further examination of the suspect from a witness declared that this was not one of the men who murdered Garcia. No further reports has been made to the capture of these gunmen. And to give you a little bit of context as to why she would be killed, Let's look more closely into the political times of the Philippines during the years 2010 to 2014. On June 30, 2010, Bagnino Aquino III was sworn into office as the president of the Philippines. His administration at the time vowed to eradicate corruption within the government system, but has yet to resolve such cases as those regarding Hacienda Luista and the Priority Development Assistance Fund scam. And what's interesting about his second term in office, the number of journalist killings under the Aquino administration has been noted to be the highest since 1986. Because of this, the Philippines has been ranked by CNN as the third deadliest country for journalists. There was an influx of information about the disappearances and murders of reporters being kept from public, as well as making several agencies and organizations and whistleblowers at the risk of exposure to harm. Some of the well-known journalists killed in the line of work during the Aquino government included Henry Araneta, Desidario Camagian, Jose Lito Augustin, Gerardo Ortega, Romeo Olea, Christopher Gowarin, Mario C., Fernando Solohan, Yo Stignos, and finally, Rubilita Garcia. And according to the 2014 Human Rights Watch report, only 6 out of 26 cases managed to identify slash capture their suspects. That is only roughly 23% of cases actually being solved. The Aquino administration did implement reforms towards more effective criminal investigation procedures, in addition to passing laws to better uphold human rights. However, these reforms are underdeveloped, and an example of these poor results was the Administration Order 35, which acquired problems in identifying which case to pursue due to the process requirements. Rubilita's murder made such an impact around the world that even Irina Bokova, the Director General of UNESCO, said, quote, I condemn the murder of Rubilita Garcia. It is essential that the authorities of the Philippines do all they can to identify and bring to trial those responsible for this cowardly crime. Murderers cannot be allowed to set limits to journalists' freedom of expression or on citizens' right to information, end quote. Even the National Press Club, along with many other of the Philippines' largest media organizations, mourn for Garcia's death. 
Garcia's death added to the journalistic turmoil in the Philippines, which resulted in many media practitioners having increased dissatisfaction and disappointment with the Aquino government's ability to rectify and prevent media killings. Bacor's mayor, Strike B. Revilla, also even started a 50,000 Filipino peso reward for anyone who would solve the case of Garcia's murder. Later, the 50,000 reward was raised to 100,000 Philippine pesos and was then raised to 150,000 Philippine pesos by ALAM. This group rallied at the Cavite police headquarters, protesting their concerns of how long it was taking to investigate Garcia's case. Funeral marchers carrying Garcia's casket during, quote, a walk for justice, adopted the slogan, quote, justice for Ruby Garcia, and had printed on their t-shirts, which wore while marching. Overall, the death of Ruby Lita Garcia is truly tragic, but at the same time, very suspicious. It doesn't make sense that two gunmen would just target her specifically in her own home for no absolute reason. And what's even worse is that she was killed in front of her family, and her family probably still feels sad to this day. Whatever the case may be, the Philippines lost a dedicated reporter who simply just wanted to shed light on the corruption of the Philippines government, and she will be greatly missed. So. Was Ruby Lita Garcia's death a situation of pure, unfortunate circumstance? Or was she specifically targeted by the higher powers of the Philippines government? Also, are the killers still even around? These are questions that still need answers, hence why this case is still unsolved. Hey guys and gals, this is Mr. Shin Ramen, and I just want to thank you for making it this far. Did you enjoy the video? If so, it would be greatly appreciated if you can leave a like on this video and subscribe to this channel for more future content. Till next time, stay safe and stay scared.